Okay, so I've been seeing some videos lately from uh, YouTube, you know, friends and uh, that make videos that I subscribe, you know, subscribe to their channel. And I occasionally see people, and even in my videos as well, they'll leave a comment about, you know, they're like working on their own radios. And that's kind of the whole idea behind a lot of the videos I do is get out there and actually work on your own, your, your own radios. Don't be afraid to. But one thing I think that scares a lot of people, especially with modern radios, surface mount. Um, it can be very intimidating to a lot of people. Uh, they think they need thousands of dollars worth of, you know, soldering stations and equipment to do it. Honestly, you don't. <laughs> you need very little, honestly, to do the majority of surface mount work. Uh, I have several thousand dollar soldering stations because I do this for a living. I'm doing it all the time. It just helps with productivity. Cuts down on time. It's faster. But you really honestly don't need anything but a soldering iron as far as tools go. Well, and a pair of tweezers if you want to talk tools. But really, the soldering iron. You don't need hot air. You don't need reflow ovens. You don't need anything super fancy. So, you know, I a lot of times you might, I would use something like this, which is a hot air reflow. Um, if I'm removing parts, I have thermal tweezers I can use. We've got all kinds of fancy tools. But honestly, you don't need all that equipment. The only thing you need as far as desoldering, the comp or removing the component, really all you need is a surface mount removal alloy. Now, I happen to have one here. It's something made by SRA, I think. Uh, yeah, SRA. This one's called Fast Chip. Um, a lot of people might be familiar with Quick Chip, which is another one. Different company, but Quick Chip. They're all basically this, and there's some other companies that make these, but you can see it's a SMD removal alloy. This is not solder. Whatever you do when we get done using this, and I will show you, you want to remove all of this stuff because it definitely is not solder. You don't want to be using this stuff to hold components on your board. The reason is solder, by its nature, is usually, like this stuff here, flexible. You can sit here and flex it for quite a while. You hasn't broken, hasn't broken. You can just keep bending and bending. and It's kind of like a piece of wire. It just keeps bending, doesn't break. It's very flexible. This surface mount removal alloy is not. This stuff is extremely fragile. You can hear that. It just snaps off. doesn't bend hardly at all. It just snaps off. That is no good <laughs> for doing soldering. Because if you use something like this once you get your part off and you reinstall your new one and there's too much of this stuff on there, that's what you're going to end up with is brittle solder joints that could very possibly and very likely will fail sooner than later. But for removing components, this stuff is the bee's knees. It's the shiznit, whatever you want to call it. Now, the whole key to using this stuff is you want to use a lot of flux. Now, I buy it in tubes. You get a lot of it in a tube. Actually, there's a lot of it missing out of here. I've used it. A lot of times, I won't even use my high-end equipment. A lot of times, it's just faster or easier, depending on the, the situation I'm working on, where this stuff is actually even easier to use. So, the whole trick to this stuff is it is an extremely low temperature, or has a very, very low melting point. So, if you heat this stuff up with your soldering iron to the temperature that you would normally solder at, it stays fluid for a lot longer than solder will. Because usually, when, if you're familiar with soldering, you solder. When you pull the soldering iron away, you can actually watch the solder. It'll change. It'll get a, you know, kind of a smoked look. It'll be nice and shiny, and then it'll just kind of glaze over. That's because the solder has gone from a liquid state to a solid. This stuff does not act like that. It will stay a liquid for a very long time, relatively speaking, but for a, a, a long time. Which, the whole idea is it allows you time to remove components. So it allows you to flood all, you know, all the sides of whatever component you're trying to remove with this desoldering alloy. And then you can just come in with a pair of tweezers, pick the part up off the board while all of that solder, you know, no more soldering iron. You've pulled the soldering iron away. It'll still be molten. You can come in with your tweezers, pick the part up off, and remove it. Now again, 
The whole key to anything you do when you're doing a uh, surface mount, actually the first thing is, is practice. So this is not actually a circuit. This is a practice board. And you can see it's some, yeah, I don't read Chinese, so I have no idea what that says. I actually got, because uh, I was doing some soldering videos in the past, and I had planned at some point in time on doing surface mount ones, and I kind of got spurred to do this one because, of, like I say, some of the videos I've been seeing recently, people saying about they're intimidated about doing surface mount. Um, you can buy these kits on eBay. You know, they come in a little bag. They're cheap as dirt, and they're cheap. I mean, really cheap boards. Um, but you get this. comes with all the components. It, you know, it comes with a part for every single location. So it comes with ICs. You know, it comes with everything you need. comes with transistors and some diodes and resistor networks. comes with everything you need to fill in every hole. But they're great for practicing. And honestly, if you can solder one of these things, trust me, you can solder anything. Because these are about the lowest quality cheap pieces of junk circuit boards you're ever going to see in your entire life. You really need to burnish these boards before you try to solder them. Now this one, I actually already started to just, to sh I wanted to brighten up some of it. But if I come in here with my fiberglass brush, I get the angle just right. You can see how it's really shiny here, here, and right here. Well, that's what I just burnished. Everything else on this board's dark. <laughs> yeah, if you try to take those parts over there and stick, plop them on this board and solder them, it ain't going to happen, guys and gals. Solder just will not stick to these boards until you clean them. They're just really, honestly, crap quality. So, a little bit of cleanup, they work fine for practicing, though. But if you can solder one of these, you should have no problem desoldering and soldering components on your, you know, in your radio or television or whatever you happen, happen to be tinkering with. So, what I want to show is, how do you remove, let's say we're, we want to replace that IC right there. So, let's say this is a, a real circuit. Um, this board's out of a radio, we've diagnosed that IC is bad, we need to replace it. But we don't have uh, the proper hot air reflow tool or we don't have the proper tweezers with the, the proper tips to remove this. Or we're going to use this. We even have a new IC right there to put in it. So the whole key to doing anything, soldering or desoldering, when it comes to surface mount is flux, flux, flux. I will say that again. Flux, flux, flux. Flux and cleaning are the two most important things you can do to have a successful desoldering and soldering experience when you're dealing with surface mount. Flux is a cleaning agent. As you heat it up, actually, kind of, I guess you could say it becomes slightly corrosive or mildly corrosive, but what it does is it etch, slightly etches the traces, helps to clean them up, but it also helps to break the bond. So there's kind of a wetting action there, and if you've ever taken a soldering iron you try to pull, you know, you solder something, you try to pull your side. If you've been on there for a while and all the flux that's inside of, you know, a normal solder like this has burned up, you'll notice that when you go to pull your soldering iron away, the solder doesn't just immediately break off. It'll kind of be stuck to the iron and still stuck down to the part, and you're left with a little, little, you know, pointy part that comes out. It doesn't just ball up and wick right back in. Where if you touch a little bit of flux to it and try that again, as soon as you go to pull the iron away, it cleanly breaks, and you'll have a nice, shiny solder joint. Flux helps with that wetting action and the flow out of the solder, so we want a lot of flux. And more is better than not enough, because flux is easy to clean off. So if we get too much on this board, it ain't going to hurt nothing. We can just clean that off with some IPA, or isopropyl alcohol later, which we will do. So I'm going to flood that whole thing with lots of flux. Now... As far as flux goes, you can use gel fluxes. Um, this is what, Kingbo RMA 218 flux. Okay, so this is a gel flux. A little bit squeezed out here. Okay, see that's a gel flux. That works fine. I've actually kind of gotten away from the gel fluxes. They're actually, in my opinion, can be a little bit messy sometimes. Um, or you can use liquid fluxes. Now, I make my own, and I buy pre-made. So this one is homemade. It's just pure rosin cake. I buy hard, highly refined rosin cakes, chip up the, chip that up, put it into a bottle, and dissolve it with 99.9% uh, .9 IPA, and I also buy it. Now, um, I like this. This is made by Circuit Works. It's composition CW3220. I have it written on the bottle there. Now, the only downfall with that flux is, I think the smallest container that they that CircuitWorks sells this stuff in 
is like a gallon bottle. Might be a half gallon, but I, I think it's a gallon jug is the smallest quantity they sell. That's more flux than I will use in 10 years. Um, but luckily, thanks to eBay, there's a guy on eBay that repackages it. Actually, he even has a website, Dick or Dicky, yeah, Dickies garage sale.com but I just get it on eBay and a bottle like this lasts me about a year so actually it's about time for me to order a new one I just use this bottle to refill my little nail polish bottle there but yeah circuit works CW3220 really good flux so we've flooded the area with that we're going to take our soldering iron actually make sure yep it's turned on and we just want to flood see how fast and easy that stuff melts Flood both sides of the component. And you can see parts just bouncing around. And now I'm going to pull the soldering iron away. Still have plenty of time. You see that? Still pull it off. That stuff's still molten. It's what I say. It has a very, very low melting point. So we got a blob on there that we need to get rid of now because we need to put a part back down there. So we want to remove all that. And if you don't have these soldering irons, you really, again, you don't need anything fancy. Just plain old desoldering braid works just fine. Actually, it's it's actually really good for cleaning up the traces later because we want to make sure we get all of this stuff off of the board. We don't want to uh, have a lot of this alloy left. Um, it's actually the last thing you really want to happen. Uh, there's some wire cutters here. And another thing to have handy, you may not have seen at a camera view, when you're doing stuff like this, now you don't need a fancy little uh, surface mount, you know, station like this. This holds uh, some cleaning brushes and sponges and has this nice little thing to drop hot parts onto and to clean off tips and whatnot. You don't need anything fancy like that. But before you do something like this, removing parts... Before you pull the hot part off, make sure you have somewhere to lay it. So even a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper folded up a couple times. But somewhere where once you've got the part off the board, you can pick it up. You have somewhere to drop it. You don't have to sit there and hold it until it cools down. But So anyhow, we want to make sure we get all this goopy stuff cleaned off of here. Like I say, ChemWick actually works really good for this. Okay, now I've got most of it cleaned off, but I can't really see because there's just so much flux residue and goop on there. You see all that brown stuff? You really can't see what the hell you're doing. That's, again, where it comes in. Clean, clean, clean. So I'll just grab a chem wipe, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to wipe this down so I can actually see what I'm doing because it's kind of hard to work on stuff if you can't see what the heck you're doing. Now, I want to come in here and make sure I get those pads as clean as I can. You're never going to get all of that alloy off of the board. Actually, get it back in camera view there. You're never going to get all of that alloy off of the board, but you do want to try and get as much of that alloy off of the board as you can. So I'm just going to run back and forth across those pads a couple times. Make sure I've sucked off as much as I can with this desoldering braid. Now, you don't want to hold it on there for an extremely long time. Um, actually, I've used this one so many times in demonstrations. You can actually see there's one pad, which actually is, isn't a solder pad. It's actually meant like as a test point, I guess. But you can see that's actually been lifted off. Again, this is a really cheap board. But you don't want to leave your soldering iron on here for a really long time. You have to remember, it's a fiberglass circuit board with epoxy. The epoxy actually starts to decompose at the temperature lower than your soldering iron is set to. So if you leave a soldering iron on here too long, you, the epoxy actually starts to decompose and what happens is the circuit traces will come loose. Now you're going to have pads to try to repair, possible circuit traces, so you don't want to have to go through all of that. 
So always, when you're desoldering and doing stuff like that, always try to keep moving. You don't want to keep concentrated heat in one spot for an extremely long time because you do stand a chance of damage, especially when you're using something like desoldering braid because you're dragging that across when you're cleaning the pads. If you leave this, set it there like that, and just wait and wait and wait, and then go to drag it across, you could rip that trace off. So now that we've got that cleaned off pretty good, we want to, again, come in, grab a new one, a little bit of IPA, clean the board off really well. and shiny pads now. We want to get our new part out. Now there's several ways you could solder this. Of course if you have hot air you could use, like I have, you could use hot air to do it. Um, stuff like this, ICs, I prefer to do what they call drag soldering, which is what I'm going to demonstrate. Now you can also do point by point. So you can solder each one of these pins one at a time. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I have work to do and don't have time for every time I have to replace a surface mount component. I don't have time to be hand soldering each individual pin. I need to do this with some type of speed. So I do drag soldering. That's where it comes in handy buying these practice boards, stuff like this, because now you have somewhere to practice your drag soldering skills. You know, you can go in and try it perfect your method. But the whole idea behind drag soldering is it's just what it says. You're going to drag your soldering iron tip actually across there and you're going to be so you're going to solder all the pins on one side and you're going to come across and just wipe the iron across, but all of your solder is going to need to be on your soldering iron tip before you start. But before we do that, again, just like with desoldering, I get this thing about halfway position there, about there. We want to again Flood the area with flux. Flux, flux, flux. This is probably even more important having lots of flux here now than it was when we were doing the removal. We want lots of flux here, especially since we're doing drag soldering. Now, this is going to be a little tricky because the camera is always in my way. I'll try and get it positioned so it's not too much in my way. But I can still get in here and work. So you want to try and get your part positioned. Try and get it centered fairly well on the pads. And centered left to right. Now it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. If it's a little bit cockeyed or crooked, it's not going to kill it, quite honestly. Yes, it's not perfectly straight, but honestly, as long as you have good contact with the pads and the leads, and you don't have shorts between any of the pins, if it's a tiny bit crooked, it's not going to kill it, people. <laughs> Some people make this harder than it needs to be. I think that's another problem people have. So, now I'm going to be doing drag soldering. So I can just use some big, fat, chunky solder here, because we're not going to be applying the solder down onto the board like that. We're going to just be using the soldering iron to do that. So, now we just use this with that alloy. So what I want to do is, is I want to apply some solder to this thing, and I want to clean it a few times. So I'm tinning this tip, wiping it off, going to re-tin it again. I want to try to get as much of that alloy off of the soldering iron. Now, ideally, in a perfect world, you should probably have a dedicated tip, but honestly, if you just re-tin your tip about three times, you will have, if there's any of that residue left on your tip, it's such a microscopic amount that it's not going to honestly make a difference. So now that your tip's all nice and clean, what you want to do is just come in and put a little bit on here, because what we want to do is the first thing we need to do is tacked down two corners so the IC can't move around. So, again, i got to try and do this around the camera. <laughs> I'm going to hold the IC down. Ah, it moved on me, of course. Trying to look around the camera here. 
Okay, there's one corner tacked. Remember, flux, 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 never have too much flux. If there's any doubt, just add some more. Okay, now, both corners are well tacked down. I can see the IC is not moving around if I try to pull it off, so that corner and this corner down here are well tacked. Again, I just want to make sure I really flood the area with flux. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, that's too much flux. Like I say, no th such thing as too much. You can always remove the excess. But it's a lot easier to remove excess flux than it is to try to fix bodged solder joints or bridges. Because that's what you'll end up with. You'll end up with solder bridges. If you try to drag solder and you don't have a sufficient amount of flux on there. So all we're going to do is take our soldering iron. We just cleaned it. Actually, there's still a little hickey on there of something. So clean the tip and we want to put a little ball of solder on here. Don't need a heaping, you know, heaping helping. Just a little, little ball of solder. And what I'm going to do is, is just as the term says, I drag it across. I'm going to apply another little bit of solder. Ah, perfect. I ended up with a solder bridge. I actually was hoping I'd get one of those because I want to demonstrate how you remove a solder bridge. Yeah, I got one solder bridge. So a solder bridge is when you bridge between two pins. And you can see the two on the left hand side there. You see that shiny spot in the middle? Let me put solder and iron back in the tray there. Got some tweezers. But there's a solder bridge right there. Okay? Normally I wouldn't end up with those. Like I say, I'm trying. I can't half see what I'm doing because I'm working around a camera. There's a few methods of getting rid of those things. The first thing I normally do is, again, I'll apply some fresh flux because the flux that's on there has now been used because we just got done soldering. Okay, so you want to apply a little bit of fresh flux. Clean your iron off really good, and then just come in. And a lot of times, if you clean the iron off, there's really no solder on the tip now. You can just come in just like that and it's gone okay you've when what you've done is the solder that was on there because there was an excess of solder there was hardly any solder on the soldering iron tip and a lot of flux when we touched the soldering iron to it the solder was drawn up to the iron now if you can't get it off that way because uh, usually actually that's actually the not where you'd find a, a solder bridge usually what happens is when you drag your soldering iron across because you're going across these pins like this a lot of times where you'll end up is these last two pins. So you'll drag the soldering iron across. You'll end up with the, the bridge at the last two pins because as you come down, you go to lift your iron off, the solder will kind of blob and break and then flow back over to the second pin there. So that's usually where it'll end up with. It's easy to get rid of. Like I say, you can do it the way I did. Just add some extra, a little bit of new flux, clean your tip off, bring that basically a dry iron tip in, and the solder will be drawn up to the tip. Or you can just use some desoldering braid. Now you don't want to remove all the solder, because remember, that's the whole idea is here, we're making a solder connection. But what you can do is, um, actually I'll use these unsoldered pads as a good example. So let's say there was a component on here. Okay, we'll use the tweezer as an example. A little bit oversized, but it's great for demonstrations because you can actually see. So, you know, the lead would be spaced about like that. There usually still be some exposed pad out here. What you can do is, is bring the desoldering braid in. Don't lay it on top of the lead, or like this, you know, on this IC. You don't want the desoldering braid to touch the IC. You want to just barely bring it in just to touch the end or the toe of these leads, so like the right here. You're just touching the outside edge of that pad or the toe of the IC. Then touch it with your soldering iron, and you'll actually see that solder bridge will get drawn out. Because you got to remember, they call this desoldering wick, or you know, Chemwick is actually a brand. That's actually what this this is. Um, 
That's why it's a wick, and it's actually exactly what it does. If you have a solder bridge here, you'll actually see it wick that solder out, but you don't want to draw it all out, because you've got to remember, that's what we're doing. We're soldering. We don't want to remove it all. So now that we've got that off, we want to clean that off really good. So we'll get some, I move the camera back up out of my way a little bit here. IPA in here. I get one of those old nasty ones. Get a fresh one. a little bit and as we can see get the camera to focus 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 see some nice solder joints no bridges the one bridge we ha did have there we easily pulled off with a, what I call the dry iron technique so you know add more flux come in with a dry iron and that solder will be drawn to it but yeah, like I say, don't make it any more difficult than you need to. You don't need fancy tools. A little bit of this alloy. Uh, the whole trick to using the alloy to get really good flow out of that stuff. Flux. And the whole key to getting a good solder connection and preventing solder bridges. Drawing off solder bridges. Again, flux. That's the whole key. And I think that's probably one of the big stumbling blocks for a lot of people. When they try to do surface mount work, they're, not using, they're either not using flux at all, or they're not using enough of it. More is better. Um, again, I've actually gotten to the point where I prefer the liquid flux over the gel fluxes. The gel fluxes, when you apply them for starters, it's a gel and it's kind of opaque. It's kind of hard to see through. This stuff, it's, in my opinion, a little bit easier to clean up. It's already dissolved in alcohol. That's what's in this bottle. The flux dissolved in IPA. So, it's a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit easier to remove. It's also more transparent, so easier to see what you're doing. But uh, there's just a really quick demonstration of really the only thing you need tool-wise. Soldering iron, a pair of tweezers helps to pick up the part, unless you've got some you know ceramic coated fingertips. But uh, yeah, pair of tweezers and a soldering iron. As far as tools go, that's really all you need. Doesn't need to be a fancy soldering iron. Just a little pencil iron. This you know, this one is a paste, so it goes down to a big soldering station. But it can just be a standalone plug in the wall soldering iron. Um, the removal alloys. Now I'm not sure about SRA, but I do know that uh, Quick Chip they sell little small packs. Because honestly, if you're just a hobbyist, you're not going to need this much. Um, a tube of this stuff lasts me a long time. Um, so, you know, for a hobbyist, this is a lifetime times 10 supply, probably. But uh, I think the quick chip, they have like the, like one of these lengths in a Ziploc bag. Just one length with a little bit of, of their flux. It's cheap, doesn't cost much, and for the average user, that's probably enough to do several repairs. You know, several stuff like ICs or stuff. Because you saw it didn't take an excessive amount. You just need to flood each, flood, you know, all the leads and then pull the part off. So I hope that helps. Um, like I say, I want to try and do this just live, one continuous shot, no editing, so everybody can see you know, how easy it is. It's, it's not hard. Um, I think the biggest, biggest thing is it's just people think it's hard, or they think it's harder than it actually is. Get yourself some cheap boards, 
Uh, like I said, they sell these kits on eBay. You can't beat the price. I mean, shipped from China, honestly, I don't remember. It's five, seven dollars. Hell, it could have been cheaper than that. Could have been two or three dollars for all I know. It's been a while. <laughs> but uh, you get a couple of the kits. Like I say, the whole kit, the whole trick to using these is these boards are tarnished. At least the ones that I got were. So make sure you clean them off first. You burnish the copper traces there because you're never going to get solder to stick to these things. Once you once you burnish the boards, you know. Take like a fiberglass brush. Once you clean them up, you can I'm try and get it in the camera just right. You can see those. I'm never going to find that perfect angle again, am I? <laughs> Trying to get the reflection just right. You can see, yeah, you can just, yeah, you can see like there. There's ones I just went across. They're a lot shinier than the others. So, yeah, you really want to, you know, clean all of these traces up before you use this board. And if you have one of these little cheapy fiberglass brushes, again, eBay is a great place for getting these little fiberglass cleanup brushes. Um, you probably order them from the same company that sells these boards, for all I know. <laughs> a lot of these companies sell similar products. But yeah, just go over it like that, clean it up really good. Makes a great demonstration. Practice makes perfect. So there you go. I hope some of those tips help somebody. It's a main thing to remember removing surface mount components without special tools, desoldering alloy, and no matter what you're doing, what type of you know, removal, anything you do with surface mount, cleanliness, so in between each stage you want to clean, 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 but probably the most important thing is flux, flux, flux. I just can't overstate that enough. Flux, flux, flux. Lots of flux prevents lots of problems.